Welcome to Sports Jam for the first week of February. I'm Jay Wilcox. And I'm John Jacobson. Ahead today on the show, highlights from a conference Nordic skiing, plus boys and girls hockey and basketball, and boys swimming and diving. And in our Sports Jam spotlight, we'll profile Hopkins girls basketball standout Nia Coffey. Let's tip it off with boys basketball. Wyzetta and Maple Grove both started the season slowly, but each team responded with long winning streaks. The Crimson at home for the non-conference game with the Trojans. Bradley Carlson has the hot hand early for Wyzetta, hitting a short jumper. A couple of minutes later, it's Carlson from the left baseline, knocking down two more, and tying the game at 11. But the Crimson start to rain threes down on the Trojans. Jake Winicky hits. Then it's Bryson Woida pulling up and draining three of his 15 points. Grant Kaufman drills a 22-footer for three more. Eight threes in the first half for Maple Grove to give the Crimson a 36-18 lead. Carlson hit a tray early in the second half. He scores 28 points in the game, but is the only Trojans player to score in double figures. Winicky leads a balanced Maple Grove scoring attack with 19 points as the Crimson win big 70-53. Cooper's boys basketball team is shooting for a North Suburban title this winter. The Hawks face St. Louis Park in a battle for the conference lead on Friday. Both teams coming in with eight no marks in conference play. Rashad Vaughn whips it to Billy Kellogg over to Darius Denson for the reverse layup and it's 12 to six Cooper. LeVar McCullough knocks it loose and Kellogg sends it ahead to McCullough for the dunk and the Hawks lead it by four at this point. St. Louis Park has a solid squad. Kashi pays with a nice drive and he avoids the charge to score two of his 27 points. Good execution here. Vaughn to Kellogg. Back to Vaughn and he'll swoop in to score. The Cooper trailing it though by one at this point. Vaughn steals the Orioles pass and he's in alone to throw down the big jam. Cooper leads a close one 29-28 at halftime. Second half and Kellogg will lead the break. Distributing here to Brandon Robinson for a tough hoop plus the foul on this play. Cooper makes a run. Vaughn attacking the defense and he spins before hitting the soft floater. Hawk star Vaughn doesn't have his best shooting night but he still scores 28 on the game. It's 41-33 Cooper. Park keeps responding though. DJ Pollard with a nice crossover here and he hits the floater. The Orioles within four at 58-54. Kellogg has some big plays. He pops a quick release three here to put Cooper up by six. 16 for Kellogg. Down to the final second. St. Louis Park down by one looking for the win. But Andrew Johnson's shot won't fall. Cooper holds on for a 72-71 win to stay unbeaten in the North Suburban. Class A power. Maranatha beat Cooper in an overtime thriller earlier this season. Mustangs didn't have much trouble with an MCAA foe on Friday. Facing Legacy Christian, Isaiah Hansen drives and scores, plus a foul for an early lead. At the other end, MCA misses on the steal attempt, so Ross Gabrielson pops in a three for Legacy. It's a long night for them. Josh Goldschmidt with the pass. Jeremiah Hansen pops a three for Maranatha. He leads the Mustangs with 18 points. Good ball rotation, and Isaiah Hansen takes it strong to the hoop, down the baseline for two of his 11 points. Garrison Lard gets a steal and takes it all the way to the layup for two of his 12 points. Maranatha wins 78-34. Section meets are this week for local Nordic skiers. Skiers in the Lake Conference raced in bitter cold conditions last Thursday. Action from the girls' race at Worth Park, and Wyzetta's Elena Sonneson starts as the leader in the second leg in the pursuit format. Sonneson is not challenged. She easily picks up the win. Her combined time of 32-21 earns Elena the victory by a minute 20 seconds on a good day for her team. Sarah Benton of Hopkins comes in second with a comfortable margin over third-place finisher Aaron Stewart of Eden Prairie. Sophomore Anna French of Wyzetta places fourth in a time of 34-17. And the rest of her teammates are not far behind. The Trojans take places 8 through 13 as the Wyzetta girls win it, beating Eden Prairie by 15 points. Hopkins is third, followed by Minnetonka and Edina. The Eden Prairie boys win the title with Hopkins second and Wyzetta third. Harris Dernberger of Hopkins is the medalist. Meanwhile, Elm Creek, the site for the Northwest Suburban Conference Championships. Osseo's Kaylee Shagan starting first in the girls' pursuit. 
And with a little light snow falling at the end, Shagan holds on to her lead and breezes to the title. Her combined time for the two races is 28 minutes, 23 seconds. That's 34 seconds ahead of the runner-up. And that runner-up is Shagan's teammate, Sarah Bezdecek. The sophomore started fourth, but passes a couple of skiers to take second in 28.57. Third is Maddie McKeefrey of Andover. And right behind her is Armstrong freshman Hannah Rudd, as Rudd helps the Falcons to the girls' team title. On the boys' side, John Delaney of Armstrong starting first based on his time in the skate race. And just like Shagan, Delaney is able to hold that lead. He takes first in a combined time of 25 minutes, 51 seconds. Jake Schroeder of Elk River is second as the Elks take four of the top six spots on the way to the team title. Girls winner Shagan was happy to see her teammate Bezdecek finish second. Yeah, immediately when I finished, I just started skiing back over to cheer her on and because uh, she was she was pretty close with another skier throughout the race so I just wanted to cheer on. As we check the team scores the Armstrong girls finished 46 points ahead of runner-up Andover. Osseo is fourth with Maple Grove, Park Center and Champlin Park going 7-8-9. The Osseo boys finished second behind Champion Elk River. Armstrong is fifth, Maple Grove sixth, Park Center eighth and Champlin Park ninth. We'll hear from two Armstrong girls and John Delaney later in the show. And Worth Park, a great place to see plenty of Nordic skiing this week, John. That's right, section races about every day there, including all of our local teams. Next up here on Sports Jam, get set for the girls' hockey playoffs with some late-season battles plus seeding information. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Jam and time to talk girls hockey. The section playoffs begin later this week. Benilde St. Margaret's is ranked number one in Class AA. The Red Knights played well against another top five team in the final week of the regular season. Benilde hosted number four Eden Prairie. First period, Benilde's Kelly Panic wins the race to a loose puck and tucks it past the goaltender to score. It's 2-0 Red Knights. Eight seconds into the second period, Sarah Tafe shoots it into the zone. Kaylee Druck. Plays the carom off the back wall, buries the shot, and it's 3 0. The start of a big period for Benilde. Caitlin Riley races in, makes a move around the defenseman, and scores a shorthanded goal. 4 0 Red Knights. And they aren't done. Mackenzie Steffen with the shot, Panic with a wide open net to shoot at, the power play goal, and it makes it 5 0. Abby Miller makes 23 saves as Benilde St. Margaret's skates past Eden Prairie 5 1. With the loss of a talented group of seniors a year ago, it's been a struggle at times this season for the Breck girls hockey team. The Mustangs faced off against a talented Hopkins squad late last week. Down 1-0, Breck evens it up. Grace Zumwinkle takes the pass and fires. Claire Mancheski puts the rebound away, and it's 1-1 one one after 1. Early in the second, and Hopkins strikes on the power play as the puck comes to Corbin Boyd, and she snaps a wrist shot in from a sharp angle. It's 2-1 to one Royals and just the start of a big second for them. On a two-on-one, Shorty Sharon puts a shot on net. Kylie Hanley puts the rebound away, and the Royals go up 3-1. to one. And they keep on firing. Sharon carries it into the Mustangs zone and shoots at Karim's Delia Chase, and she puts it in for a 4-1 lead, and it's 5-1 to one Royals after they get four in the second. And Aaron O'Neill... Isn't about to give that lead up. She makes 24 saves. Hopkins rolls to a 5-1 to one win. In the Northwest Suburban, Maple Grove hosting Armstrong Cooper. Maple Grove on the power play. Maddie Wu over to Summer Thibodeau scores, and it's 1-1. One to one. Armstrong Coopers, Marissa O'Dell on the rush, slams on the brakes and slips it between the pads of Brianna Blessy. Armstrong Cooper leads 2-1. to one. Second period, watch O'Dell on the shorthanded rush. Fights off the defender and tucks it away on the breakaway. Great goal makes it 3-1 Armstrong Cooper. But Maple Grove battles back. Kipito takes it to the net. She loses it, but Olivia Rose now fouls up to put it away. That ties the game at three after two. Third period, power play and the crimson shot here goes wide. A jam at the rebound and number 39, Haley Herdeen is able to lift the puck over the goalie and in. Nice rally for Maple Grove. They end the regular season with a 5-3 win. And that brings us to the postseason. That's right, John. Most of the teams we cover are in the loaded Section 6AA tournament. 
Minnetonka is the top seed with Benilde seeded second despite being ranked first in the state poll. Hopkins is third, followed by Buffalo, Wyzetta, Armstrong Cooper, Maple Grove, and North Metro. The quarterfinals are Saturday with North Metro facing Minnetonka at noon, followed by Wyzetta Buffalo. Then it's Armstrong Cooper versus Hopkins and Maple Grove versus Benil. This whole tournament is at parade. In Section 5AA, Champlain Park is the only local squad. The Rebels are the number five seed behind Moundsview, Andover, Blaine, and Anoka. Saturday, Champlain Park meets Anoka in the quarterfinals at 2.30. This tournament is at Roseville Arena. In Section 5A, Breck is the number three seed behind Blake and Orono. Rogers is fourth. Breck meets St. Louis Park in the quarterfinals Friday. And in Section 4A, Totino Grace is the number three CJ behind South St. Paul and St. Paul United. The Eagles play similarly in the quarterfinals Saturday afternoon, 5.30 at St. Thomas Arena. Get ready to drop the That's puck. Right. It'll be fun. In, in boys hockey, Totino Grace is ranked third in Class A. That's likely to change after their Saturday game against number five, Hermantown. Hermantown's in blue, a great setup here. Travis Kepke leads the rush, slides it to Chris Benson, who scores one nothing Hogs. Second period, Hermantown gets another power play goal. Neil Pionk cranks up the shot from the point and finds the net for a 2-0 Hermantown lead. Off the faceoff, the puck bounces to the net. Rory Davidowski thinks he has it covered, but it stays loose, and Benson swoops in to put it away for a 3-0 Hawks lead. Later in the second, the first Hermantown shot is wide, but Bo Gronseth sends it in the crease to Zach Kramer for the one-timer. Hermantown rolls to a 4 to nothing win. Now to girls basketball. Maranatha is rolling through their opponents in the Minnesota Christian Athletic Association. Coach Jim Hammond's team looking for its fifth straight win. The lob pass into a wide open Lexi Lee who scores to put MCA ahead of Legacy Christian 32 to 7. Later it's Maddie Lee on the wing. And she will knock down a three-pointer. Maranatha goes up 37 to seven in the second half. MCA with some good outside shooters. Hayden Hammond gets the three to drop here from the corner. This one is never really close. Maranatha in transition. Elena Jarnot will finish this one off as Maranatha rolls to a 55-22 win over Legacy. Also in girls basketball, Armstrong hosting Champlin Park. First half, the Falcons in transition. Samantha Zabracki to Rachel Ross, who hits the pull-up jumper, giving Armstrong a 10-8 lead. Ali Zafi hits two three-pointers late in the first half, including this one to put Champlin Park up 24-22 at halftime. Second half, a nice skip pass from Kelsey Meredith to Hannah Sasek. Falcons looking for their fourth win of the season. They're down just three. But the Rebels hold the lead. Alexis Alexander to Genevieve Atkins for the hoop and harm. Champlain Park wins 51-43. The Rebels are at Osseo Friday. In boys swimming, wyzetta has got a pretty solid squad, but the Trojans faced a powerhouse Edina team in a late conference meet. The Trojans hosting the Hornets in this one. In the 200 medley relay, Edina wins easily. Jonathan Willett swimming the anchor leg. Their winning time, 1 minute, 41.14 seconds. The 200 freestyle, it's a close one between Edina's Sean Satterwhite and Wyzetta's Kevin Stowe. Satterwhite wins by just over half a second with a time of 1 minute 50.23. 200 IM, Edina's Jackson Lindell blows away the field, his time 2 minutes and 7 seconds. And the Hornets keep winning, Buzz Renberg takes the 50 free in 22.66. On to diving, Wyzetta has two very talented junior divers. This is Eric Mitchell, he takes first with 270.2 points for six dives. And Caleb Zarns takes second place for the Trojans, but Edina goes on to win the meet 112 to 74. And we are approaching the end of the regular season in boys swimming also. A couple of weeks until the section meets. Stay with us straight ahead in our Sports Jam Spotlight, be one of the state's best players in girls basketball. Next month, the Hopkins girls basketball team will try to shoot for a third consecutive state championship. To reach the top again, they will need the best play out of one of the state's best players. Here's this week's Sports Jam Spotlight. If you are the best player on the state's best team, you must be a pretty special athlete. That's the spot Hopkins senior Nia Coffey is in this season. 
He is the Royals' top scorer and rebounder, averaging 18 and a half points and nearly nine rebounds per game. Last summer, she focused on specific things to help her improve. Definitely my upper body strength, shooting, definitely, and um, I worked on dribbling a lot this summer, but definitely just getting my knees stronger and ankles because those are a problem area sometimes. I feel like I've gotten a lot stronger and smarter. Um, thanks to my coaches and my trainer, they really helped me throughout the summer. She's very unselfish. She distributes the ball real well. She rebounds. She does the little things. You know, she leads by example in terms of you know, she's going to be the first one in sprints, and she's going to be the hardest worker on, in practice every day. So she definitely makes everybody around her better. As one of the most talented juniors in the state a year ago, Neil was heavily recruited by several Division I colleges and signed with Northwestern University in Illinois last fall. She liked the team and the coaches, but most of all, the school's academics. I'm a student athlete and in the order for sure. Definitely homework comes first, school comes first before anything. Teaming with her older sister, Sydney, the Royals won state class 4A titles in both 2011 and 2012. Sydney is now playing at Marist College in upstate New York. It's different for Nia not having her big sister on the court anymore. It is really weird. I usually look for her on the court, you know, just getting advice, anything, but it kind of taught me that I need to start taking more leadership roles, more responsibility for myself. Whenever I wasn't feeling so confident in myself, she would always just boost me up, lift me up, help me in any way, just really talk to me, give me advice, and just she was my motivator a lot when I just felt like I wasn't doing so well. The biggest basketball influence, though, for Nia, Sydney, and younger brother Amir has been that of their father. Richard Coffey played four years at the University of Minnesota from 1986 to 1990, and then spent one season in the NBA with the Timberwolves. He really just taught us from the beginning, from everything, from defense, offense, rebounding, just all the fundamentals. So he basically taught me everything that I know. But very early on, I just try to focus on their fundamentals, you know, the dribbling and the shooting. And I, I, I focused in on that very early because when I was a kid, I didn't get that. And that kind of hindered me later in my, pro, in, my, in my career because I wasn't as good at some of those things. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, they, had, they had a lot of natural ability. I just want to make sure that I trained the, them in the, the basic fundamentals of the game. Richard was known as a ferocious defender and rebounder during his Gophers days, something he's trying to pass on to his kids. You know, everybody likes to score, um, but you know, a kid that can rebound real well and, and play strong defense is also an, an attribute to the team. And a lot of times, you know, kids out on the court and they forget to do those things. You know, Nia focuses in on those things a lot. And, but she also can score as well, so she kind of has an all-around game. He told us about how he scored most of the time, which was off of rebounding, how important rebounding was. And that just really showed me that, you know, rebounding, it might not seem like a big deal, but it really is because you're giving your team another chance to, you know, to make a basket or to transition. Section and potentially state tournament play is just around the corner for the Royals, bringing an end to Nia Coffey's prep career experience in the school she will remember fondly. I've really enjoyed it. We have great coaches. The girls make it really fun. So it's just an all around a good environment to be in. So and sometimes they make it hard, but we're always here for one another and we just make it through together and we just have a great time doing it. Nia is planning to study mechanical engineering at Northwestern. The Royals host Minnetonka Friday night. Sports Jam returns in a moment as Jay talks Nordic skiing with the Armstrong Falcons. Welcome back to Sports Jam. It's Nordic Ski Section Week for all the local teams. And we're joined today by the Armstrong Falcons who are coming off the Northwest Suburban Conference meet. And they had an individual winner on the boys' side and a team champ for the girls. We'll start with John Delaney who uh, won the conference meet. And uh, talk a little bit about that win, John. You know, pretty good competition, a lot of teams. How did you feel about uh, your performance out there? Uh, I felt pretty good about it. I went in pretty confident because I guess I haven't lost a conference meet yet this year. And uh, I knew... Jake Schroeder would be pretty good. I was, I've was i been kind of looking at his times lately, and just I knew he'd be right there on my tail, and he didn't let down at all, and he was right there, and he was bearing down on me in that second pursuit race, and he got within 10, 15 meters, and then I pulled away at the end for the win, so that was fun. It was good competition. Sounds like weather-wise for sections might be a little bit better. 
teams this week have really had to deal with cold. Does it change anything? Is it tougher when it gets to those real cold temperatures to, to keep your wind up? Uh, when it gets cold, your immune system can get down. It's easier to get sick. And then uh, if you're sick, sections is not very fun. So, you're, I mean, we're just trying to make sure we stay healthy, shorten practices for sure if it's cold, and uh, just a little bit of change in wax. Not too bad. What's the outlook for yourself personally and also as a team on the boys' side for sections? Uh, sections, I'm just hoping for a top four finish. There's, uh, I know there's three ranked individuals that are just ahead of me, so you know, just competing with them would be good. And uh, as a team, the top half of teams would be good, so like a top five finish would be great. All right, good luck, sections, and uh, hopefully stayed for you too, and congrats on the uh, conference win. Thank you very much. And uh, turning the girls' side, they repeat as a team champ at the Northwest Suburban, uh, starting with Anna Neighbor. And uh, was that a goal coming in to, to go back and do it again like you guys did last year? Mm -hmm. For sure. The girls were really focused on getting another win. And so that's basically what we tried to do. <laughs> Out on the course, is it easy for you to tell how your team's doing? Can you kind of get a sense a little bit of where you might be placing, or, or are you too worried about you know individually how you're doing? Um, it's more individually how we're doing, but we always see how the girls are doing at the end of the races, how they felt, and if they're doing well, we just hope for the best. Overall, what's the season been like for your team? It's really exciting just having like new girls come in. They're all pretty young, and so we have a lot of years to look forward to. Mm -hmm. We got that big first snowfall, and it seemed like it was going to be a great winter that way. Not so much sense, but uh, conditions-wise, what's that the season been like in that regard? Um, it's pretty nice. We've been using whatever is available. Hopke, our coach, tries to use at least 10 feet of snow if we have it. So we've just been on the lake and at French, and we've been using everything we have. All right, good luck, and uh, congratulations on the conference win. Thank you. And Hannah Rudd, uh, your team uh, performing very well, obviously, you know, at the conference meet. Um, you know, how big of a goal was that coming in and season long? Were you looking at that as, as one that you guys really were, were shooting for? Yeah, we really wanted to win it again like last year. <laughs> uh, how did you feel like you performed, and what were the conditions like at Elm Creek? Um, my first race went pretty well. The second one, a couple of girls passed me. It was super fast the whole time. So. Also, I know a lot of the skiers are competing in things beyond the high school stuff, too. Does this kind of just fit right in nicely with some of the other things that you've been doing, too? Mm -hmm. We've been doing the Junior Olympic qualifiers, so... Me and John both made it to the Nationals in March to go to Alaska. <laughs> All right, congratulations on that and on the uh, team title at the conference, and have fun. Thank you. All right, Hannah Rudd along with Anna Neighbor of the girls' team and John Delaney representing the boys' team for the Armstrong Falcons Nordic Skiing again at Section Week this week for Armstrong and all of the teams in the area. We'll be back to wrap up Sports Jam for you right after this. Follow 12 Sports replays and live events on Twitter, Facebook, and live stream. Watch your favorite high school athletes performing live on your computer or mobile device. Link to us on 12.tv. Lace up your sneakers for the Hoopin' It Up for Hope fundraiser for Treehouse on Saturday, March 16th, 1 to 3 p.m. at Wayzata Middle School. Find out more at treehouseyouth.org. Get set for the West Metro Home Remodeling Fair on Sunday, February 24th from 10.30 to 3.30 at the Eisenhower Community Center. Find out more at homeremodelingfair.com. Our game of the week is a huge showdown in boys basketball. It's the rematch between Park Center and Osseo. Watch the game live Tuesday night at 7 and catch the replays Wednesday at 8.30 and 11 p.m. Should be a great game. That is it for this week's show. Next time on Sports Jam, we'll have our first girls hockey playoff highlights. And get ready. The wild ride of February and March is about to begin. See you next time here on Sports Jam. Follow 12 Sports replays and live events on Twitter, Facebook, and live stream. Watch your favorite high school athletes performing live on your computer or mobile device. Link to us on 12.tv.